Hello again. So in the previous video, we had this, uh, we had the um, quick introduction of, uh, you know, the tra traveling cells, no problem. And we said we can use genetic algorithms to solve it. And then we mentioned that uh, the search space or the number of different tools can be extremely large, that it's actually not feasible to go through all of them. Uh, in this video, we're going to try and explain the local and global maxima and minima uh, when solving combinatorial optimization problems. This concept is extremely crucial to understand so we can uh, sort of grasp the concept of the search and then grasp the concept of finding the best and the optimal solution. Now, if you're familiar, for example, with the traveling cells, no problem, and then genetic algorithms, if we try to plot, for example, the, fit, the value of the fitness function as the y-axis, and then the x-axis, for example, we can make it our different solution. So every value for the variable x in the, on the x-axis can be one distinct solution or one distinct permutations of, of the cities or one tour, and then on the y, we will have the fitness value or the evaluation uh, resulting when uh, the value resulting when we evaluate that tour, right? For example, the distance. Okay, so maybe if we are x is here, then the distance is that much. If x is here, then the dis distance is this much, and so on and so forth, right? So the, 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 the plot you can see in front of you now is from Wikipedia, and this is uh, for function cosine 3 pi, uh, 3 pi, uh, 3 times pi times x over x, right? Where the value of x is uh, uh, larger than or equal 0.1 less than equal uh, 1.1 okay and as you can see when we plot this function we can notice that uh, um, the curve goes down as x increases uh, until that point and then here the curve now goes up when x increases and then it reaches that point and then the curve now goes down again and then goes up again now the lowest point here is called the global minimum and then sometimes we can have low points, low points resulting after, uh, you know, decreasing and then increasing. And then the highest point or the highest value in the y-axis can be called, that can be called the global maximum. So the highest possible value of y. Likewise, this is the lowest possible value of y, right? But that can, uh, can also be considered a maximum in that region and that's the maximum in that region, right? The highest value of y because here, as you can see, y increases and then it stops increasing and then decreases. So that can also be seen as a maximum, but it's not the overall maximum because if we search only in that space, then that we, we call that the local maximum. But, but if we look at the overall space, then that's our global maximum and that's a local maximum. Likewise, for the global minimum and the local minimum, if we look at it in this area only or in this area only then this is local uh, a local minimum because we only look at it look at the sp look that area of the space whereas if we look at the overall space then we can see that that is the overall lowest point so that is the global minimum now why do we explain these things the problem as we mentioned before is sometimes the search space is extremely large and it's impossible for us to study it all right to study all of the search space and of course, when, when solving a problem, for example, like the, sale, the traveling sales no problem, we want the global minimum. We want uh, the tour that gives us the shortest distance or the shortest, basically the quickest time that we can do the, the tour, right? Whereas in, in many other um, functions or many other problems, what we're looking for is not the lowest value, maybe it's the highest value. So we're either looking for the global maximum, the highest value, or the global minimum, the lowest value. But as we mentioned, we can't actually study the whole space because it's too large and it's not feasible to do that. Then we might search some area of the space. And then if we study, for example, that area, then we might find that, okay, that is the lowest point. But how can we tell that that is actually the global minimum? That's the be that is the true solution for our problem. And how can we tell if we look at that so uh, area of the space? and we're looking for the look for the maximum value and how can we tell that that is actually the real uh, 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 maximum value so that is the true solution rather than maybe a good solution right or either there or there so these are 
uh, the global, uh, local and global maxima and minima, the idea of them. And sometimes, if we try to solve a problem, if we, for example, find the best solution to be that, and unfortunately, usually, we don't know what the search space looks like, and we want to, you know, jump out of there, maybe sometimes our algorithm, our algorithm thinks that, okay, that's the highest point, and this must be the solution, and we want to say to the algorithm, no, we try, we'll try to get you to jump out of there and maybe investigate and explore more of the search space. Maybe that is a local maximum or a local minimum rather than the global one, the one we're looking for. Okay, so this is the idea of the, um, the simulated annealing. It's quite nice because it will help us jump out of a local maximum or a local uh, minimum and try to explore more of the search space. Let me stop here. Uh, in the next video, we'll learn more about the actual simulated annealing algorithm and see how it works. So, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.